The Beetle is on its way out. With waning sales and VW shifting its focus toward electric and crossover vehicles, many saw the writing on the wall for this little nod to nostalgia long before VW confirmed suspicions at the Geneva Auto Show this year. But before this last generation takes its final bow, VW has a last hurrah for its beloved bug in the form of a new engine. Hi, I'm Mike Perkins from CarGurus and this is the 2018 Volkswagen Beetle. Previously powered by the very familiar 1.8 liter turbo, the Beetle is one of the first recipients of this new engine. It's a fresh take on improving fuel economy by trading power for efficiency, and you can see it right in the numbers. With the old 1.8, the Beetle delivered 170 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. But with the larger 2.0, the numbers are nearly identical. There's just a four horsepower increase. Instead, you're getting an extra two miles per gallon in city driving thanks to a new cycle developed in-house at VW. Now, we're actually in the middle of an engine tech revolution right now with radical advancements out there like Koenigsegg's electric valve train, like Infiniti's variable compression engine and whatever Mazda's got going on with its spark controlled compression ignition engine. And this isn't as revolutionary as any of those, but it's still a really interesting way to improve efficiency. Without getting too complex, what this engine does is it lowers compression in the combustion chamber when the engine isn't working too hard by varying the intake timing. It's, you know, basically VTEC in reverse. But because it lowers the pressure in the chamber for part of the combustion stroke, what that means is that the temperature in the engine will actually go down. Lower pressure means lower temperatures. And nothing robs an engine of power and efficiency like heat. Now last year you could get an R-Line Beetle with a different 2 liter engine, but that's been discontinued for 2018. Now you're left to choose between the Base S, SE, a special 2018 Coast Edition, and this Dune you see here. They all get the new engine, but otherwise the only change is some colors dropping off the options list, I hope you weren't in love with dark bronze and fresh fuchsia metallic, and a new style and comfort package for the Base S that adds 17 inch wheels, auto headlights and wipers, keyless ignition and entry, heated seats with leatherette, HD and satellite radio, body color trim outside, an auto dimming rear view, and a 6.3 inch touchscreen with VW App Connect. That last one gets you Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and for the $1,500 it costs to add the package, I can't see any reason why you wouldn't. So, what does this mean for you? Well, it's a slight increase in fuel economy, like I said. Two miles per gallon around the city and one mile per gallon overall. And yes, that's with regular fuel. And theoretically, changes that they made to the internal construction of the engine should allow it to rev more freely, although I'm not really noticing that here. However, the intake timing changes, those will allow you to access the power earlier in the power band. So even though it's the same amount of power, you're actually getting more usable power, which is exactly what you want in city driving. And because it has the variable valve timing, as soon as you need it to give you all the power it has, you know, as soon as you enter a high load situation, the timing reverts back to normal and just essentially goes to regular operation. So you're not sacrificing anything when you need the engine to put down the power. Now the Coast Edition is an interesting last splash for the Beetle with a dash designed to look like a surfboard, houndstooth upholstery, a panoramic sunroof, and a unique deep sea teal paint job. But otherwise, it's mechanically identical to every other Beetle out there. However, this Dune Edition is actually modified slightly from the pack. It gets its own sandstorm yellow metallic paint job, and it's intended to be inspired by the old classic Dune Buggy Beetle conversions you've seen. To that end, it gets a suspension that's raised by more than half an inch, a slightly wider track, and that larger spoiler out back, but VW is insistent that you don't try to take it off-road. You are going to get stuck. 
still, it looks great with unique bumpers front and back that look a lot like the R-Lines from last year. Uh, unique interior treatment here with these sports seats and color match trim. And uh, honestly, it just looks great. Now I actually drove a 2017 Beetle cross country last year and I was really impressed with the ride and the comfort and the engine. I wasn't blown away by the performance, but I wasn't expecting to be. And the extra MPGs that you would get with the 2018, that would be very, very welcome. Now the Ray suspension in this Dune, I don't think it's really helping the ride any. In fact, if I had to say one or the other, I'm guessing that it's Give, making a little less composed over rough roads, and that's probably only exacerbated by the convertible construction. That said, it looks good enough. I just might not care. Before you pull the trigger on your convertible Beetle, there are a few caveats. Trunk space in a regular Beetle lands at 15.4 cubes, but in the convertible, that's more than halved at 7.1. If you're planning on some coastal touring with the top down, you'd better pack light. And of course, things are noisier and more cramped in the convertible than the hardtop. But if you didn't expect that, I'm not sure I can help you. There are sacrifices to be had when you cut the top off a car, but being able to look up into bright blue sky is definitely worth a bit of extra noise. And despite being the most expensive Beetle by more than $4,000, the Dune doesn't come with blind spot monitor or the top of the line touchscreen interface meaning you don't get the VW navigation or the car net security and service system. And that allows you to find your car, check to see if your doors are locked or your lights are off, and even check how much gas you have just from your phone. And that's an odd choice. The real question with this new engine is how it's going to deal with problems that have plagued previous VW engines, namely carbon buildup on the valves and oil consumption. Now, from an engineering standpoint, I can see how it would help the former and worsen the latter, but best intentions don't always translate into practical applications, something I'm sure Volkswagen knows better than most at this point. Still, as they continue to focus on their electric future, this new engine just kind of feels like more of a stopgap attempt to squeeze a few easy MPGs out while they wait for the ID buzz to be ready for 2022. The fact that they were able to do it without sacrificing drivability, well, that's the reason that VW deserves some congratulations here. So if you ever wanted a Beetle, well, time is running out, and this new engine is a great way to say goodbye. I would probably stay away from the Dune, though. I absolutely love the way it looks, but the price and the drawbacks are just too much sacrifice for too little gain. But an S with the style and comfort package? That's a hell of a good deal. And the Coast may just be the cutest option on the market right now. Hey, thanks for watching. For full details on the 2018 Volkswagen Beetle, including a more in-depth discussion about this new engine, just click the link in the description. You can head over to cargreaves.com and read my full review. And don't forget, for videos of some of the competition, just subscribe to the channel.